Hi, my name is Claire Fister, and I'm doing my tech talk on an introduction to tabulation dyna and dynamic programming through the subset sum problem. Uh, the question we're trying to answer is, given a set of positive integers, does a subset of that set sum to a desired sum? So an example would be if there's a subset um, that has 1, 2, 9, 17, 22, is there a subset of that that sums to 26? And as you can see, just by looking at it, the answer is yes, because 9 and 17 add to 26. And the approach we're going to take is dynamic programming. This allows us to split a complex problem into more manageable subproblems. And by solving these subproblems, we can solve our main problem. Um, and we're specifically going to use tabulation. This is a bottom-up approach. And we'll build a table. And the last entry in that table will be our answer. And we can use dynamic programming on this problem because it has two properties, optimal substructure and overlapping subproblems. Optimal substructure just means that we can get an optimal final solution through optimal solutions of subproblems. And overlapping subproblems just means that the subproblem solutions are needed multiple times. Uh, we're storing the solution to these uh, subproblems in a table, and this is only useful if we use these solutions more than once. So this is how we would set up our table. For example, if our question is if there's a subset of 1, 2, 3, and 7 that equals 6, the table would be set up as follows. The top row contains all integers up to our final desired sum. This will allow us to calculate subproblems with sums less than the final desired sum. And the left column contains all elements of the set, where each row represents the subset of values where the value at left is added to the previous set, um, the set of the above row. So this just means, for example, if we're on the row that has three, um, we, our set would include three plus the two values above it. So um, in this case, that would be the set one, two, three, which I've indicated at left. And each cell represents a question, and what we put in it represents the answer. And the question uh, at all of our cells is, if we add the number at left to the set that includes all numbers above it, does that set have a subset that equals the sum in the top row? So this is kind of long, so a shorter version of this is, is there a subset in the set at left that equals the sum in the top row? So an example of a subproblem we might solve um, based on our table is, does the set 1, 2, 3 have a subset that equals 2? So our set is at left, I've highlighted it, and then our, the sum uh, that we want for this subproblem is also highlighted. And then we can use these subproblems to solve our main problem. Um, which in this case is, does the set 1, 2, 3, and 7 have a subset that equals 6? And again, the full set is at left highlighted, and then the sum is at the top. And how do we find the answer at each of these cells? First, we need to ask two sub-questions for each cell. So the first um, sub-question is, if we do not include the last value of the set in the subset, do the remaining values in the set sum to the desired sum? So, as an example, here's a very <laughs> simple example, but if we have a set 1, 2, and we want it to sum to 1, one possibility is that we don't include that last value 2 in the subset. So 2, we know, is not in the subset. And then the question is, of the remaining values in the set, do they? is there a way to make them sum to 1? So in this case, the remaining part of the set that we can use is just 1. And we know that, yes, that sums to 1. So that's our subset. And this is how we would represent it in a table. We follow the same pattern um, as before in the way that we would check to see whether um, this first question is true, is that we look to the cell directly above our cell of interest. So if we move up one cell, we'll see that the question becomes, is there a subset of 1 represented at left which sums to 1? And the answer here, as you can see, is true. So therefore, the answer to our original question is also true. The second question we can ask is if we do include the last value of the set in the subset. So again, I will go through a little example here. If our set is just 1, 1, 1, and our sum is 3, one possibility is that we do include that last one in the set. So there it is in our subset, and our remaining values that we can work with are 1 and 1. And we know that those two have to sum to, or not that they have to, but within the, those values, there needs to be a subset that sums to 2 because we already have a value of 1 in our subset. And so we know that, yes, this is true because 1 and 1, there is a way to get that to sum to 2. So then we have a subset of 1, 1, 1. Oh, sorry. And um, the way that we represent this in a table is by going up one row and left the value of the element. So in this case, it's up 1 and left 1. 
and the value there is true. So we can say that that's true. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we can say it's true. And so this is how we would put this all together. Um, if our question, which I showed earlier, is in the set one, two, three, seven, is there a subset that sums to six? We have it set up just like this. And we will start filling out the table. Um, we know that any set of integers can have a subset that sums to zero if an empty set is selected. So all, everything in the first column is true. And we know that one can only sum to zero in its own value. So we have the zero and one columns in the first row equal to true and everything else equal to false. And then we can go and fill out all the rest of our cells asking those two questions that I talked about earlier. Um, so we'll start with, is there a subset of one that equals one? So we went up one, uh, one row and we see that that's equal true. So therefore, this cell equals true. Move on to our next one and we'll ask the same two questions. We go up. Our previous set of one um, does not have a way to sum to two. It's shown by the false. So we'll ask our second sub-question. And we can see that the answer to the second sub-question is true. So we can fill this in as true. And we'll proceed in the same way. Here we'll ask if the previous set already has a way to sum to our desired sum. That's false. And so we will ask our second question. Um, if we do include two in the set, we know that um, the remaining set will have to sum, have some way to sum to one. So that would equal true. So this would equal true. And here we can just see by inspection that there is no way to form four from one and two. Um, and we can kind of still ask the same questions. And both are equal to false. And we can fill out the rest of the row as false because we know one and two, there's no way to form anything uh, three or greater. And then we can continue doing the same thing for the next row. As you can see with the last couple of cells, uh, it was true above all of them, so therefore it's gonna be true in these cells. And then we'll continue. And you can see by the squares that I'm asking the same questions repeatedly. And then you may notice that the cell above every cell in the next row equals true. So all the cells in this row will equal true too. Yay. So we solved all of the problems. <laughs> and therefore, we can solve our main problem too. Um, this cell, highlighted in green, represents the question in the set 1, 2, 3, and 7, is there a subset that sums to 6? And uh, what it contains is an answer. So the answer to our above question is true. And then, very quickly, here's the code that you can use to actually fill in this table. Um, the first loop fills out the first column, the second one fills out the first row, and then this, um, the nested loops fill out the matrix in the bottom up format. Um, so if you look, we have matrix J, K equals matrix J minus 1K. That matrix J minus 1K um, is seeing, is checking the cell directly above our cell of interest, and then the matrix J minus 1 K minus RJ is checking up one and over. So these are the resources I used, um, or just ones that you can look at. There are a couple alternate explanations if you want a little more practice. Um, and also a lot of these, I know at least the first of these YouTube channels, he goes through a lot of similar tabulation questions. Um, if you're interested, um, here's another resource that talks about dynamic programming in general, and then a link to my GitHub repo with the solution. So that's it.